the Buddhist and the butcher. Once upon a time, in a certain place in southern China, a Buddhist priest lived as a hermit in a small cave, practicing austerities in order to purify himself so that he could enter the vested paradise and become a Buddha. One day he decided that he had practiced austerities long enough but that it was time to travel west to the western paradise. So he put on his best robe and took the little hollow wooden fish he dumped on when he chanted scriptures and set up. He walked for many days. One day, as he was resting beside the road, a butcher came by. Where are you headed, master? asked the butcher. The priest said, I have set out to enter the western paradise to become a Buddha. Oh, that's wonderful, exclaimed the butcher. Alas, a person like me, with his hands drenched in blood, can never hope to attain the western paradise. When he sighed at it, great sight, for he had never really liked slaughtering animals. It was simply a family business, and one must work in a family business whether one likes it or not. The priest said, of course that's true. You are surely doomed. Buddhism absolutely forbids taking life. You are certainly going to the deepest hell to suffer unutterable tortures. This was not a comforting idea. And the butcher said, I am quite unworthy in this life, of course. Oh, how oh, I wish I could stop being a butcher and live as a virtuous vegetarian in the next. What a terrible fate I have. But the Buddha is merciful. Perhaps if I implore this priest with a sincere heart, he will bleed my case in the Western Paradise when he gets there. And he said with tears in his eyes, Reverend Master, I implore you to present my heart to the great Buddha and bleed that he slightly reduces my horrible punishment. The priest had just started to roll his eyes with skepticism, but he remembered that the Buddhist should seek the salvation of all creatures, even butchers, and that he really ought to honor the naive face by which the simple man hoped to escape his just punishment through the compassion of the great Buddha. So he agreed to present the butcher's heart to the Buddha in the Western Paradise. To his surprise, when the butcher had said, Present my heart to the great Buddha, he had meant this quite literally. The moment the priest nodded in agreement, the butcher took out his great knife it was a single skillful stroke. He cut out his own heart and handed it to the priest and collapsed in death. The shocked priest did not know what to do. But having agreed to convey the heart of this simpleton, he wrapped it up and continued his westward journey, muttering prayers and invocations. After a time he came upon a small roadside temple with a large spirit burner. The believers burned written prayers and paper money to the other wood. A Buddhist is not afraid of death, of course, but he can be just as disgusted as anybody else by the decay of what is dead. And the bloody heart had begun to emit a disagreeable order. As he approached the burner, the priest made sure that no one was around to see. 
and then quickly threw the revolting pit of flesh into the roaring and holy flames. He was not really abandoning his trust, he reasoned, since the great Buddha would receive the heart well enough this way, just as he received the smoke of paper offerings. And anyway, there was not much future for a butcher who would still have to go to the deepest hell and face the results of his wicked way of life. But as the priest was reflecting on his good wit, in finding a satisfactory way to get rid of the rotting heart, the flame suddenly flared up, and the fire roared, a frightening figure seemed to appear, who looked like the dead butcher. The ghost said, the western paradise is neither near nor far. It is located where there is a sincere heart. I thank you for your, your assistance, for now I have entered the western paradise and have become a Buddha. The priest was overcome with regret. He had much underestimated the great Buddha's compassion for the true sincere, and in disposing of the simple butcher's heart, he had betrayed the trust that the man had in him. The butcher's sincere repentance had outweighed his sin of killing animals so much so that it had even made him a Buddha. The priest knew that he could never hope to do the same. Well, how could he ever hope to overcome his sin of betraying a trust 